In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can switch from Social Learner to our new Buddy Boss platform. This tutorial is aimed at customers who are already using Social Learner on their websites and want to switch. And you guys are really in for a treat here. This new product we've developed, we've been working on this for multiple years, and it's based completely on the feedback that all of you who have purchased Social Learner have been giving us over the years. So we've created something that is really beautiful for your customers and easy for them to use, has a much better and expanded social experience out of the box. And we've completely overhauled the backend experience to make it easier for you to manage your site. Just to give you a sneak peek of where we'll be in a few minutes, this all courses directory is going to look like this and a single course that normally looks like this. is going to look like this. If I go into a lesson, currently your lesson looks like this. And in a moment, it's going to look like this with full screen mode and dark mode and all kinds of cool stuff. And then one more thing, I'm gonna go into my inbox, which currently looks like this. And instead you'll have this nice inbox drop down and, and your inbox is about to look like this super modern, really nice inbox, even in mobile mode. It looks awesome. So with that, let's get started. Okay. So what I did for this setup is I took our public demo and used our one click installer and made a clone of it. The setup I'm about to convert is an exact replica of what's in our demo, what you guys start with. And if I go to plugins, I've also added some extra plugins that don't come with our demo, but that we have sold in the past and maybe you guys are using. For example, Buddy Boss Media, Buddy Boss Wall, Buddy Press Member Types. I'm gonna go through all of this, how we can convert all this to the new Buddy Boss platform. And it's gonna take a little bit of work, but it's not too hard. In about 10 minutes, we're gonna be there. And what you're about to see is that the amount of plugins we have installed here is about to be reduced pretty dramatically. Now, before I actually start going through the steps, one big word of warning is that if you have a live website, you really need to take a backup before proceeding with these next steps. We're about to make some major changes to your website, to the plugin stack, and just to be totally safe, you really wanna have a backup. All right, so to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is just disable a bunch of plugins we no longer need. So BBPress, we don't need anymore. Boss for LearnDash, we don't need. BuddyPress Profile Search, if you're using that, you don't need. BuddyPress remove profile links if you're using that, don't need. BuddyBoss Media, you don't need. BuddyBoss one click installer, no longer needed. BuddyBoss products updater, no longer needed. BuddyBoss wall, don't need it. BuddyPress, don't need it. BuddyPress for LearnDash, don't need it. BuddyPress global search, don't need that. BuddyPress member types, if you're using it, you don't need that. And if you're using the user switching plugin to switch back and forth between users for testing, don't need that anymore either. So I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate all of these plugins. And then if you get this error at the top, you can ignore it. This is going to go away in just a moment. So you might be wondering at this point, how and why are we removing more than half the plugins here? And the reason is that we've actually taken over BuddyPress and modified it. And we call our version of BuddyPress the BuddyBoss platform. It's much easier to use, much more expanded in terms of its default functionality. And it's really tailored for you guys based on the feedback you've given us over the years. And because we own the plugin now, we can do whatever we want and we no longer need all these peripheral plugins. The reason all these plugins exist is because BuddyPress itself is an open source project that we never owned. And while we're involved in the BuddyPress community, we have fairly limited influence on what features they add and what decisions they make. And so in order to give you guys the functionality that you ask for, we've had to make all these peripheral plugins that kind of extend BuddyPress. So actually what you're about to see is that the whole product stack now from us is just one plugin and one theme. And then of course you might need to add LearnDash and WooCommerce and other big third-party plugins, but the BuddyBoss product stack is now just two files. And if you have any concern about switching from an open source project like BuddyPress to a proprietary project like BuddyBoss Platform, no need to worry. BuddyBoss Platform itself is open source too. And our intent actually is to give it away for free and grow it and for it to be popular in its own right. This is our way of giving back to the BuddyPress community. We've made our own variant of BuddyPress that is a lot more feature rich and easier to use. And we're giving it away. Anyone can use it. Anyone can build their own themes on it. And it's a fully free open source project. So we've deactivated all those plugins. We're going to now add our BuddyBoss platform. In the plugins area, we click add new and click upload plugin. And when you purchase the new product from us, you should have been given this zip file. 
bodybossplatform.zip. So we're gonna add that. This zip file, this plugin is the replacement for BodyPress. So then we will activate the plugin. And then we get this pop-up welcoming us to the new plugin and telling us some of the features. And we see this new error message. Don't worry about that. That's gonna go away in a little bit. So let's go to appearance themes. And of course we need to switch the theme. So we're gonna click add new. Upload. And when you purchase the new product from us, you should have gotten bodybossTheme.zip. That's the theme. So you're going to click that and install and activate. And I would recommend adding one more thing, which is our child theme. So I said our product is just two files, the theme and the plugin, that's true. There's a third file, the child theme, which I'd also recommend if you plan on doing any custom development. And that's the case for any theming in WordPress, including the social learner way. You wanna make any edits in your child theme, not in the main theme. That way when we release updates to the main theme, you don't lose them. So let's go ahead and add the child theme too. And you should have gotten a zip file, buddybossthemechild.zip, that's the one. And we'll install the child theme. And then we can activate it. And just like that, we've already made some progress. Let's check out the front end. Already our members directory is starting to look like the new way. Our groups directory is updated. If I go to our demo course, it's looking okay also. However, if we come to our all courses page, you'll notice that this isn't looking right. If I edit the page, you'll see it's just running LearnDash's shortcode. So we don't really need this page because LearnDash already gives us this URL. So if I come back here, I can actually trash that page. And then I could go to appearance menus. And then we can just add this as a custom link. And that will repair that in the menu. Of course, you can name that link all courses, whatever you want in here. So there are still some more steps, but as you can see, we're already making progress. Let's resolve all of these errors. So the first one, Putty Boss theme requires LearnDash 3 template. However, you, you are using legacy repair. So you may or may not have already upgraded LearnDash to LearnDash 3.0, which came out recently. If you haven't, you're going to want to do that because our new Putty Boss theme requires LearnDash 3 to work. It's very easy to switch from LearnDash 2 to 3, all the data ports all you have to do is go update it. And if you've already made that update and you were using Social Learner, you have to use the legacy LearnDash 3 template in Social Learner, but in our new theme, we support their new template. So let's click repair. And if you're using LearnDash 3, you'll know it because the UI will look different like this. In the active template, we're going to switch to LearnDash 3 and click save. Just like that, all our courses should look proper now. Let's go back to the back end. Next error, this license for Buddy Bus theme is invalid or incomplete. Please click here and update your license. We're gonna go to our license manager and add a license key for a Buddy Bus theme. It's very important that you do this because the Buddy Bus platform and the Buddy Bus theme are designed to fit together like a glove. And as we update the Buddy Bus platform with new features, we're always going to be updating the theme to style those new features so everything works great. So you want your license key so you have access to updates. And also if you wanna interact with our customer support, you need a valid license key. When you purchase the product, you got an email with a license key. You could enter that key and your account email in here. You can also use this connect to BuddyBoss feature, which is very easy. I'll click that. If you're not already logged into BuddyBoss.com, it will ask you to, and then just click allow. And it tells me that it verified it. So it does take a moment, just be patient. It has to fetch some data from the BuddyBoss server. It's basically authenticating that you actually purchased the product and then sending the license key. So it takes about a minute. So just wait and then it'll give you your feedback. So we'll just click OK and wait a moment for the page to refresh. And there we go. We can see that my license has been verified. All right, let's go back to our dashboard. And the remaining errors are just generic things coming from WooCommerce that are unrelated to the product. So I'm just going to dismiss those. All right, so now we have to re-enable a bunch of things that have changed. So let's go into BuddyBoss. 
And now you can see that all the menus are included in this area. There are no menus related to our functionality outside of this. So you might recall that we disabled BBPress. BBPress is what was powering your forum software before. Same story as BuddyPress. It's an open source project. They haven't made any major updates to it in years, and it's really lacking in terms of how a forum should look and behave. So we forked BBPress and merged it into the platform and made it a native component. So now to get your forums back, you will just click activate for forum discussions. And now on the front end, if I go into one of our groups, if that group ever had a forum before, then it's back under the discussions panel. And so now here are our forums, except of course, now they look awesome. One very important note is the URL. In BBPress, they call each forum thread a topic, which I always found to be confusing, so to most customers. So we've renamed that default to be discussions. So each forum has a discussion and a reply. As a consequence, when you first enable platform, the URL is gonna be set to discussions. However, if you are coming from social learner, it's very likely, almost definitely, that you had the set to say topics. And if this is a public site, that means your URLs are gonna be different now, and that's gonna affect your SEO big time. So you might wanna switch this back to topic. Discussions is nice in the URL for a new site, but for someone existing, you don't wanna mess up your SEO. That's very easy, we come back here, go to settings, and we can see all our active components. If they have settings, they're all easy to find in here. So we'll click on forums. And right here, we can change the slugs. So discussion is going to be a topic, discussion tag, topic tag. These are the only ones you need to change to go back to the defaults. So let's save that. After making a change like this, it's very important that you go to settings permalinks and just resave this. Otherwise the change might not take effect. And then if I go back to the front end, let me just go back to the root forum. If I click one of these, we can see the URL has switched back to topic. This is the default that Social Learner and BBPress had before. So if that's what you were using before, you wanna switch that to maintain your SEO. All right, moving on, we're going to enable media. So this is only relevant if you were using BuddyBoss Media previously. Well, you might want media either way, but this is relevant in terms of migrating the data from your old media. So let's go to Body Boss Components. And you no longer need that Body Boss Media plugin. We have media included, so we can activate that. And this new media component is stunning. I think you're really gonna love it. We've improved everything. But before we can get started, you see we have a warning. We have found some media uploaded from the Body Boss Media plugin which is not compatible with BuddyBoss Platform, you should import the media into BuddyBoss Platform first. So we need to do a migration. We'll just click Run Migration and let it do its thing. So that's it, it's done. These are the images and albums that existed in our demo, it's not that many. If you have thousands of images, of course, this will take longer. And now we can go to Settings, Media, and you see we have options for turning on and off photos and albums in profiles and groups. We can add photos into messages and forums. We also have introduced support for emoji and animated GIFs. You can play with all this on our demo. Well, let's quickly go check and see if our media really was imported. So first let's refresh the page. And now I have my photos linked back. And here are all my photos in a really nice view. I can paginate through them and I can go into albums and my albums were imported. So let's click one. And the photos from that album were imported as well. So as we can see that worked and our media is restored. So let's keep going. If we come back to plugins, we have this plugin BuddyPress Global Search, which we're no longer using. So let's set up the replacement for that. We can go to Buddy Boss Components and then enable what we're calling Network Search. This is basically the same thing as BuddyPress Global Search. We merged it in and improved it quite a bit. So if we go to Settings, we can click on Search. And you're starting to see the theme here that the whole interface is all unified now, both in the back end and the front end. And then we have all of our search options, which are basically the same as what you're used to from Global Search. So let me just turn on some stuff so that we actually get some results. And then 
I can search for John. I get my drop down results and click view all. And here's our results. You can see all the results here, including courses, everything. And you can also drill down. So I'll drill down into members. And we've got John. And there you go. So now search is back. Okay, so there are a bunch of other small things I want to go through. And then I want to talk about courses and groups and how courses connect to groups because it works differently in this product than in Social Learner. It's way more flexible now, but it requires that you change some things and learn some new paradigms. So make sure to keep watching till the end so you see that part. All right, I'm gonna quickly do some cleanup. So let's go to Appearance Themes. We don't need Boss Theme anymore. I'm gonna delete that. Now, the Child Theme, you might wanna keep around for now. If you've ever done any custom development in your Child Theme, then that custom development is going to have to be ported into the new child theme. That's its own kind of larger topic. I'm gonna to get to that at the end of the video. All right, let's remove plugins we don't need anymore. All right, so BB Press can go, we already know about that. Boss for LearnDash, that's just theme related. There's no need for this anymore. BodyPress remove profile links, that's a very old thing related to BodyPress, don't need that anymore. Media, we've already ported, we don't need that. One-click installer, I'll come back to this and explain, but we don't need that anymore. Product updater, we don't even need that because the theme has its own license key system built into it that can check for everything. The wall, we don't need that anymore. Um, BodyPress, we don't need anymore. BodyPress for LearnDash, we don't need anymore. Global Search, we don't need anymore. So let's delete all of those. This one we can turn back on. When we disabled BodyPress, it immediately disabled. There are plugins out there in the world that hook into BuddyPress and will only activate if they see that BuddyPress is there. This is one of them. BuddyBoss platform is designed to be backwards compatible with BuddyPress and we've even gone as far as to trick these kinds of plugins into thinking BuddyPress is running so they still work. So let's activate it. And it's back, it's gonna work fine. And then we have about four plugins here left to delete. First, let me just show you their parallel features and then we'll delete them. So profile search is what adds a search form to your members directory. If I go to Buddy Boss settings, go to profiles, we can just enable profile search. And now when I go into Buddy Boss profiles, we have profile search. And we can add fields in here and configure them just like the other way. So I'll say name, last name, and update that. And now when I go to the members directory, we automatically get a search form that looks really nice. And the reason we took over this plugin and brought it in is so that we can improve the UI of it to have a consistent experience and just make it super simple to enable. And also we've added some custom search parameters in the system. For example, we have repeater fields. We have a whole video about that and we've added support for that in here. You can search members by which courses they're in and we will continue to add more things in here over time. We can go ahead and delete that plugin. All right, let me just quickly go through these others. So one-click installer, you don't need that anymore because you already have the site. The purpose of this plugin was to allow people to clone the whole demo to their site. We don't do this anymore with the new platform. The reason we had to do that is because there were so many plugins and it was so complicated to configure. Now you can see if you're fresh, it's just one plugin. So we don't need all that. We actually have a new method here under Buddy Boss Tools. If you're setting up a fresh site, you would just add our plugin and our theme that's easy enough. And then we have default data that you can import. So you can import profiles, profile fields, members, forums, whatever, and you can delete it at any moment. It'll go away from the site. So this is our newer, more flexible way of doing that. Let's go ahead and delete one click installer. Moving on, we have member types. You might be using this to organize your users into types. No need for that anymore. If we go into Buddy Boss settings and profiles, we can go enable profile types right here. It's the same thing as member types. We've just renamed it to make everything consistent. And we've also given you under groups for your info, group types and group hierarchies are all options you can turn on and off now. So we can come back here and delete that plugin. And then we have user switching. If you're not aware, this is a plugin that lets you as an admin switch back and forth between users. It's very common. A lot of people use this on BuddyPress to tests as an admin going between their users. No need for that because we've built that in in a much nicer way. So when I'm in the members directory, I can just click on some user 
And this again is only available to admins. I can click view as, and now I'm logged in as Walter. I can go back to the members directory, click some other user. I can click view as, and now I'm logged in as Jessica. And at any moment I can click switch back to admin. And now I'm back as myself. So we felt like this is a feature that is absolutely necessary in this kind of network for the admin to actually accurately be able to set up and play with their site. So we just built that out of the box in a way that's very elegant. So we can go ahead and delete that as well. All right, so let me refresh. And now we can see we only have eight plugins remaining. Only one is coming from us. The others are other plugins that you may or may not need. So obviously this is a much more streamlined experience now. All right, we still have some more steps remaining. Let's go into Buddy Boss Tools. And because we just imported all the stuff, we wanna clean up our data. So click on Repair Community. And you wanna run all of these. Now, depending on your server, it may or may not be able to do all of them at once. Probably you should do them in batches. And make sure to do this with the emails. It's basically the same like BuddyPress, but the emails look much nicer and the text has changed. So you wanna reinstall the emails. And if we go to repair forums, you're gonna to want to run all of these also. This data repair makes it more likely that everything's gonna run smooth in your site right now. One plugin I forgot to mention before is BuddyPress Follow. If you have follow functionality on your site, then you're probably using this plugin. Very old, hasn't been updated in three years. That's the story for a lot of BuddyPress plugins out there. Anything that should be part of a social network out of the box, we wanna include in there for you. So we have this already built in. You can delete this plugin. Any data you add in here will port. In here, you can go into settings, activity, and you can see that follow and likes are both just options now you can turn on and off. All right, let's look at our inbox. So we can see that our whole inbox was ported in. One thing to note is that it works slightly differently in BuddyPress. The inbox worked like Gmail where you would compose a message and it would have a subject and content. In the new platform, it's a much more streamlined messenger like Facebook Messenger or LinkedIn Messenger. You just have a never ending thread with each user. So this creates a much simpler and more elegant messaging system. And in the future, it's going to allow us to do things like have perhaps a live chat thing here that pops up or have messaging in our mobile apps. You can't really do that with an email style interface. You need it to be a single threaded interface like this. But all your existing messages should port into here. But coming back to our plugins, what are these other ones for? Badge OS is for gamification. That still works fine. There's also GameApress, which is really popular. You can use either one, they work fine. LearnDash and LearnDash Pro Panel are obviously for your courses. WooCommerce is optional if you wanna sell content through that and you can connect it to LearnDash with this integration. That's how we had Social Learner set up. That's up to you if you're using that or not. If you're not, don't worry about it. Coming here on the front end, we can see that WooCommerce is styled really beautifully in our theme. I'll click Add to Cart. And just like that, we've got a little cart drop down. I can click Checkout. And the whole WooCommerce experience is really amazing. So we got you covered there. And last, we have WP Bakery Page Builder, also known as Visual Composer. So that's what's putting this layout on the homepage that is from our demo. So you can see it looks okay, but not perfect. We haven't really put a lot of work into supporting this specific plugin. This was added in our social learner a long time ago, because at the time this was popular. But nowadays it's pretty dated. Most customers we find are using either Gutenberg, Elementor, or Cornerstone as their page builders and we've put a lot of work into supporting those. So those will look really awesome. Given that most of our customers are using that, it's very likely you're using one of those to build your pages. If you've been doing it through this plugin, then you may or may not need some tweaking on these pages, or you might wanna to switch to a newer, more modern page builder. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the final part of this tutorial, which is showing you how to connect courses with groups. So coming back here to the public demo, if I go to a demo course, we can see that it's one course connected into one group. That's what you're used to if you've been using Social Learner. We've gotten feedback from so many clients that this is just not flexible enough for them. People wanna be able to connect the same course to multiple groups, and they also wanna be able to have a bunch of courses in a single group. They want to be able to just mix and match the stuff, and so now we've made that possible. 
Now, we know that a lot of you are using LearnDash groups already. If you're not, then you're going to want to switch to that and learn how that works. So if we go into LearnDash, we can click on groups. And from here, we can create a group. This is different from the social group or buddy press group that you're used to on the front end. This is a way in the LearnDash backend to organize instructors and students and courses together into like cohorts or classrooms. And this will be the basis of what we're doing. To explain it further on the front end, we have groups. And in your old social learner, when you opened up a group, you'd have a course tab. You can see that's gone now. Your course is no longer connected. So this is one little bit of this transition that's going to require some manual labor from you to reconnect everything just because it's done in a totally different way now. So before I do this, we need to go into Audio Boss settings. And we can click on integrations. And you can see that we have, if LearnDash is enabled, LearnDash integrations. So from here, we can connect and sync LearnDash groups with our social groups. So I'm going to check that. And you can also sync in the reverse, but this only really happens on creation. So we're going to kind of have to retroactively recreate this. You can turn on your options. Basically, what this is going to do is sync all the LearnDash group content into your social group, including the members. So let's save that. And then we're going to come back to our LearnDash groups and click Add New. And so I'm going to create a group that's going to connect to world history. In Social Learner, you would create a course to connect. And here you create a group, which is kind of a higher level that can contain courses. So I'll call this one World History because we're going to connect it. And I can pick which course or courses I want to put in that group. So obviously before, World History is the one that was connected. In Social Learner, usually they would have the same name. So I'll connect that. Now, don't just click Publish. If you do that, it's going to create a social group on the front end automatically that will be connected to this LearnDash group. So we want to pick our World History group. And now we can click Publish. And let's come back here and refresh. And now we can see our course tab is back. And we can see all the course info for the World History course, which looks pretty cool. But we can go further and now we can add a few courses in here. So I can modify this group. Let's put biology, chemistry, and economics in here as well. Now, when I refresh this, the label has changed to courses and we have a new layout showing all the different courses that are part of this group. I can click on one and view it. So already you can see this is way more flexible. And let's say you wanted to have world history as part of a bunch of different social groups. Well, you could just create more LearnDash groups in the back end, and each one you would assign to a different social group, and each one you'd put world history in, along with maybe some other ones. So you can do whatever you want here. And then the other thing this allows for is syncing members. So in here you have group leaders and group users. Now, it's a little weird here because you have an existing site already, and so this group already has nine members. And then the idea is that the users who are synced in as the group leaders would be the organizers in your group. And then the users who are synced in as the users will be the members or students in the group. So for new groups, you can do it this way where you just create it from here first. It will automatically create a social group. And then as you add more people into these LearnDash groups, they'll all just sync as members into the social group and you can make these groups private. And then in LearnDash in the back end, when you're looking at reports and stuff, these leaders automatically get access to see data and reports for the users in their group for the courses they have access to. So now your front end social group is like actually playing nicely with the way LearnDash is intending things to work. But because your groups already exist, it's up to you how you want to do this. You could manually copy all these members into here and copy the organizers into here. This one I can't copy, for example, because he's not actually an instructor but he'll still remain in here. Like when we sync from here to here, it doesn't wipe it out. It'll just add them. So that's up to you if you want to manually move the stuff and use the sync features. So just to show you this in action, we can see that the user Michael is not in this group at all. And he's a group leader. So I'm going to put him here and update the LearnDash group. And now he's one of the organizers. So that's the intention of how this is going to work. But given you already have all this data, if you don't want to use this stuff, you don't have to sync those. You can just use this to, to connect your courses. It's really up to you what you want to do here.
So that's basically everything excluding custom development, which I'll get to in a moment. And this whole tutorial has taken about 30 minutes thus far, which may seem like a long time, but at the same time, we've just removed about 10 plugins and switched from BuddyPress and BBPress to a whole new core platform and switched your theme and reconfigured everything in that time. So if you need any help doing this, feel free to contact our team. And we are offering a done for you solution where you can pay us and we'll migrate and reconfigure everything for you. And you don't really have to do anything. And then the one other thing I want to talk about, which is pretty important, is custom development. This went off without a hitch. Everything was pretty smooth here doing this migration. But this is the default demo with no custom development in it. So if you've done customizations that add some complexity, for example, if your customizations are in your child theme, well, obviously you've just switched child themes, so they're gone. And those customizations are customizing the boss theme. So when you switch to a different theme, that doesn't really make any sense anymore, right? So you might need to redo them or move them. And maybe you've had custom plugins built. I mean, who knows? It's WordPress. Who knows what you've done in here? So there is always the possibility that some of those customizations have to be redone or moved in some way. Again, if you need our help doing that, we have a big team of developers. We're happy to help you with that part of the transition as well.